in my left hand, I'm holding a live beating heart. We can see the function of the heart. We can see the heart beating, and we can assess the other parameters which can suggest whether the heart is struggling or whether the heart is beating very nicely. So we regularly take the blood specimen, and um, Paul is checking the oxygen and the lactate. So that is not only reassuring, but it's very amazing as well. Yes, that is amazing. Dad? Oh wait, that's my dad, yeah. That's that's my dad, man. Oh my gosh, this is mad. I managed to watch and assist my dad in heart and lung surgery. Mad, I know, I know, absolutely mad, absolutely crazy. But before I get into explaining what happened, first things first, I wanna say, I think I wanna make this into a series. Tomorrow I'll be working as a doctor. So... Tomorrow I'll be working as a doctor. I'm gonna see some cool stuff. I can't exactly be on the wards with my camera being like, yo guys, I just, did four digital rectal exam. Pause. So instead, I thought it'd be cool just to do like these type of like sit down videos where I explain stuff like a little story, like little chill time. You do the tea, I've got my water and I can do the... I think that would be cool. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. And also second thing, remember to like, comment, subscribe, blah, 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 all of that. It all started in this room, right? It's a weekday, 10 p.m. I'm in this office and I'm about to go to bed. All of a sudden, my dad walks in and he says, Yo, cuzzy, what you saying? Aye, 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 nothing much, yara, what you saying? Yo, I'm good, yeah, alhamdulillah, uh, yo, listen. Yeah, bro, what you saying? I'm about to do this uh, lung and heart surgery, yeah? You in? Aye, aye, aye. So I'm getting ready, yeah, to go with my dad. And my mom's like, oh, no, like, leave it. Like, it's late. Like, why are you going? You don't need to go. And I actually half think about not going. And then I remember, hey, I'm not a, a stupid idiot, okay, who says no to opportunities this is a golden opportunity i'm gonna say yes so i get ready and then me and my dad uh we drive to the hospital not the hospital where we're gonna do the surgery but the hospital where we gather our equipment and also group with the team and our team was made up of my dad me <laughs> and then also i'm gonna get this wrong but i think it was like a surgical tech and then a perioperative nurse i want to say maybe i think equipment and team sorted and then an ambulance van escorts us to the hospital where we're gonna do the surgery now bear in mind yeah it's about like 11 p.m now and like i'm realizing damn i didn't bring any spare contacts like my eyes are, I'm, I'm scared that they're gonna get dry i can't even take a nap as well not only because of the adrenaline of course because i'm about to watch my dad do heart surgery but also because my contacts were dry and, and then fall out and i'm literally like blind without them so we both reached the hospital where we're gonna perform the surgery at we change into the scrubs and then we reach the operating theater. Now, I don't, I don't toot my dad's horn yet a lot. But what the hell? I don't, uh, I don't want to come across as like boast for anything, but I, I'm have to like, I'm have to gas him up here in this, in this moment. When we reach the operating theater, imagine there's another surgical team who are retrieving the gastrointestinal organs. They're from another city, bro. Imagine when my dad arrives, like the lead consultant and then another like surgical reg, they both like come to my dad and like I can see the surgical reg is like getting bare gas and he, he even says something like, oh, like I've heard so much about you, like it's, it's an honor, it's a pleasure. Th there's just that like level of respect and like I'm thinking, yo, like this is sick. Like Alhamdulillah, like my dad has been blessed to be able to like teach other people around the country and he's, he's, uh, again, I don't wanna, I'm not, I'm not boasting yet, but I have to be proud. Like I'm his son, I have to be proud of my dad. Like, he's sick. And then in comes me, okay? <laughs> in comes me, the medical student. And uh, I look to the, I look around and I see the anesthetist. And I'm like, yo, I know you. Coincidentally, this is the anesthetist that I did a clinic with like a few months back. And um, it was mad, like, what a coincidence, right? So I was like, yeah, I, I know someone as well, man. I'm like my dad, like, oh. <laughs> And then when it, the time came, me and my dad, we scrubbed in for surgery. Bro, I can literally just stop there. Like that, that sentence alone, I scrubbed in with my dad. That's enough. That, that's, that's like, that's amazing. That's just like, how many people can say that? Like it's mad enough being in surgery and like watching or assisting, but to do it with your dad, like this was just like a surreal moment. Like this was like sick. That was like such a wholesome and like sick moment, man. 
Oh my gosh. And then after we scrubbed in, we go to the body. There's a gastro-surgical team working there and they're gonna be working simultaneously with us. And so me and my dad opposite each other are sitting where like the chest is and the chest is already open because they've kindly opened it for us, ready for the heart to be taken out and the lungs to be taken out. Now surgeons are quite keen on teaching so the surgeon is really kind, the gastro surgeon is really kind and he encourages me to like touch and, and revise my anatomy of like the liver, I get to touch the liver, the kidneys, the intestines. That was, that was all so cool. But then I look and I set my eyes on the heart, bro. A live beating heart and a live breathing set of lungs, bro. And with this left hand, I were under supervision, I put my left hand under a live beating heart. In my left hand, I'm holding a live beating heart. Do you know, like... Do you know how crazy that is? This is, this is like, this is... I've been in surgery before, okay? I've seen other surgeries. I've assisted in the delivery of babies through C-section. I've seen brain surgery, open brain, the brain. I've assisted in spinal surgery. I've seen really cool stuff, right? But there's just something, there's something different about doing surgery on the heart. There's, the, I, there's something quite poetic or, or romantic about it. As people, we put so much importance of the heart. But what do we say when we're sad, right? Or we get rejected, oh, I'm heartbroken. Like we don't say I'm brain broken or I'm liver broken. So this was just such a blessing and such an added blessing to be able to be doing this with my dad, my dad, bro like opposite me, like mad, absolutely mad. You know how people feel that carotid pulse in the neck? Bro, I was like that, I was palpating the aorta, bro. The largest blood vessel, okay, the largest artery in the body, the most powerful, the most important, yeah? I'm bloody like palpating it with my two fingers and I'm holding this live being heart in my hands. Mad, absolutely crazy. And then, bro, it just keeps on getting more mad, yo. Like, and then, oh. Do you know how mad this is, dude? This is, this is crazy. They asked my dad, oh, uh, Mr. Buck, uh, can you take an ABG, please? And for my medics out there, wh where, where, do you normally, where do you normally take an ABG? It's, it's a needle, right? And you, and you take it from the radial artery in the wrist. You, you take the ABG from the radial artery in the wrist. Where, where, did, where did my dad, yeah? Where did my G, where did my G take this ABG from? He took it from the pulmonary veins, bro. The pulmonary veins. He, he took, he took an ABG. He stuck a needle to draw blood from the pulmonary veins. This, this is, this is what he does best. The I'm, I'm just in, I'm just in complete awe, yeah. And we've not bloody even like, we've not even got to the maddest bit. This is, this is madder than fiction, bro. This is, bro, I'm, I'm this is so mad. I'm breaking my camera at the minute. This is how mad this is. He takes an ABG from both the pulmonary veins, okay to assess like the blood levels, okay, the acidity and like the oxygenation, all of that jazz. But he sticks a needle in the pulmonary veins, bro, okay? And then do you know what happened later on in the operation? Do you know what happened? Guess who, guess who cut the... <coughs> guess, guess who cut the aorta? Guess who cut the aorta to separate the heart from this donor? Guess, guess, guess who cut the aorta the most, the, the, the big bad boy artery thing, yeah? Guess who caught the aorta, yeah? Me! I did it! I, 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 I did it under supervision and it was all safe and everything and uh, this, that, I did it! I did it! Me! I did it! Oh my gosh, bro, I'm sorry for being like, annoyingly loud probably, but, like, uh, you know, I, I never really, understood before this day, why would people want to become surgeons? It's so competitive, it's, it's so hard, you have to dedicate years, like the training pathway is like mad, like so many years dedicated and the work-life balance is terrible, why not become a GP or something in three days? Bro, this, this was the day I understood. The adrenaline, the beauty, the absolutely incredibleness, that's not even a word. Imagine being able to do that, do the stuff that I'm explaining, like day in and day out. Like what an honor and privilege that is. Like 
so I understood. I understood from this day why people want to become surgeons. Now, I can't remember all the steps to a long retrieval, so, so I'm going to get my dad to explain it at the end of this video. So stick around for that, okay? But, you know, after making incisions and clamping certain veins and, you know, doing this and doing that, the heart was taken out and then we took the lungs out then after that. And the lungs were bagged uh, in like, like fluid and ice and they, they were bagged several times, basically. And after being bagged several times, they were put into this container, I think that was full of ice. And those set of lungs would then be escorted to the hospital in which the lungs would be implanted in the recipient. Now, and I asked my dad a few days after the operation happened, like, oh, did, was it successful? Was the implantation success, successful? And imagine, imagine someone is walking around here out there, okay? Someone is walking around out there with a new pair of breathing, healthy lungs that I helped to retrieve like alhamdulillah like i don't like it i'm i'm getting i'm getting goosebumps bro like this is this is crazy the camera's not gonna focus but i'm i've got goosebumps even to this day and after we finished the surgery we got escorted back to our to the hospital back home by the ambulance van and yeah it was quite late at night i can't remember like maybe 2 a.m or 3 a.m when we got back home but bro it was it was an absolutely amazing and mad experience the lessons that i took from this is that there's certain things that money can't buy like this experience right here it doesn't matter how much money you have you can't buy this experience this experience is earned through years and years of dedication and hard work and training and experience and you know, I, I was I was blessed enough to do that as a medical student and you too as a medical student, if you have the contact, you'll be able to have the opportunity to do stuff like this and assist and watch in these types of surgeries. But it's such an honor and privilege. And I think it's easy to forget that nowadays, understandably, because there's a lot that needs to be improved in terms of working conditions and pay. But you're making such a huge direct impact on the people around you, on human lives, bro. Like these are neighbors. This is someone's uncle. This is someone's auntie. This is someone's mother, someone's father, someone's child. Yeah, that's what I took from this. Like, it's, it's such a blessing, such an honor, such a privilege to be in this position, to be able to do stuff like this, to have such a massive direct impact on someone's life. Dude, listen, like, this, this wasn't just probably the, the highlight of my medical school. And this is funny because this happened in my last year, right? And in my last week, pretty much, of medical school, not only just my last day, but my last week of medical school, this happened. This was probably one of the highlights of my life. Be able to assist in a lung retrieval with my dad. I, I won't be able to do that again, really, realistically. Like, he's, he's going to retire, hopefully, inshallah, so we get that money. He's going to retire in a few <laughs> years. I, I'm not going to be able to get this opportunity again. And I'm just so grateful, alhamdulillah. And I've honestly, I, after that day, I've got a new found respect for my dad. I knew what his work entailed. I knew what he was doing, but seeing it is different and seeing how other people respect him and interact with him is different. And uh, it's a lesson for all of us with our dads. We, we know what they do and what, whatever they do, but just know that they're working so hard and it's, it's to provide for us really like they, they can, they'll enjoy what they do hopefully inshallah, but really at the end of the day they're really working hard to prov to provide for us and yeah like just a newfound respect for my dad honestly and i'm so grateful i'm so happy that i didn't listen to my mom who was like oh just you know go to sleep man you know it's late you don't need to go what the no of course not respectfully because you're my mom but what the i guess that's the last lesson is to just say yes to opportunities whatever opportunities come your way don't say no because of some sort of imposter syndrome. Don't say no because, oh, you're too tired or whatever. If it's an amazing opportunity, just grab it because you don't know when that opportunity is going to come again and it may not come again. But anyway, that's the end of this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. And uh, yeah, everyone make dua that I don't be a terrible F1 and I actually adjust to my job correctly and um, yeah, that I enjoy my job as well, that I don't find it too stressful and everything and that I save lives and stuff. Okay, bismillah. Okay, salam alaikum. Bye.